And continuing our talks on dementia and senior focus, when a loved one is facing cognitive issues, many families struggle to understand the extent of the problem. And they also have no clue about how their own behaviors and reactions sometimes can make things worse and not better. So here to help us understand is Jennifer Kimball, the executive director of Proactive Partners. So thank you so much for being here today. Give us a little bit of understanding on what loss with dementia is. Okay. Um, I think that uh, most people come out with really a lack of knowledge and they think they need to know the biology of it. And I try to simplify things for people to, to make it a little more understandable. So I'm going to give you my uh, little non-biology. I okay. call it kind of dementia for dummies. Um, so there's a part of our brain that uh, obviously malfunctions with dementia. And if you can imagine that we have this file cabinet in our brain and for all of the information, the facts, what's called declarative memory, that goes into that file cabinet. There's several drawers, and those long-term memories go in the bottom. All that stuff that you know for many years goes in the bottom. Anything else that you learn along the way goes in, and it files very nicely. You know where to find it when you need it. Mm -hmm. So when someone says, um, where do you live? I can say Shreveport, and I just pull that right out, and it's a very fluid motion. There's no disruption if everything is okay with the brain. Uh, so when I say, hey, what did you have? Did you have eggs for breakfast? Yes or no, you know it, you don't know it, it's facts. Uh, when somebody comes along and they say, hey, what's your daughter's name? I say, Jenna Marie, I just pull that out. When I have eggs for breakfast, I put that in there and when somebody comes and asks me, I pull it out, it's fluid. Now when there's a problem in the brain and somebody puts something on that file cabinet, it begins to just warp slowly. The drawers begin, you know, begin to get really difficult to open. The files are hard to get to. Last that's, that's um, you know, affected by it are those long-term memories in the bottom drawer. But in the meantime, as that, that sits on the top of it and it becomes warped, we just literally can't get in there. So when someone says, who's your daughter? I can't get that information out. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like being in a classroom when the teacher says, I'm going to come around and ask questions about that book you're supposed to read and you know you didn't read it and you're going oh I hope the teacher doesn't call on me and you kind of shrink down in your, that in moment your of seat. Panic. Yeah that that anxiety goes up so when you back them in a corner and you ask them something that they can't possibly come out with that information hey what year is that and that's a fact that's declarative memory they can't possibly pull that out at a certain point with dementia so what should you do not ask those questions. And simply put, uh, give them the opportunity to not be put in the corner. Give them the opportunity to do things and engage in things that they can succeed at instead of setting them up for failure. So steering clear of all those things mm -hmm. that are missing, uh, the focus is on engaging in muscle memory, procedural memory, because we are fortunate enough that we don't lose what's in Purkinje cells, that muscle memory is stored in another place in the brain besides the hippocampus, where that file cabinet is. So we, we focus on that and do things that engage them um, in, a, in a, a hands-on way. Give them some uh, corn to shuck. Give them some, some towels to fold. Some of these things that we do, we've been doing all our life, we don't think about them. We it's just do them. simple muscle memory. Absolutely. And in using those things that, that we do all the time, it's, it certainly de-escalates situations because anxiety goes down when you can be successful. Uh, when you get back into that corner, again, anxiety goes up and escalation goes up and activities and behavior can sometimes be, you know, unpredictable. One thing that I do have to mention as a nurse is if you see escalations, you probably need to also check out medically that there's nothing going on like infections. Mm, okay. um, things that can, you know, somebody may have a rock in their shoe and they can't express that. You know, rule out all those causes for escalation. Uh, but understand first and foremost that you can't expect to get something out of somebody who physically doesn't have the capacity to do it. So if they've lost that capacity in their brain, don't expect them to do it. You need to go to where they are meet them where they're at. Right. If they're not living in 2024, you're going to go to whatever year they're in. If they're not living in Shreveport, you're going to go to where they are. Any situation, you go to where they are because they can't be wrong. 
and you have to make it work with where they're at. So Jennifer, thank you for coming in and sharing this information. That's a lot of good information that I know a lot of our viewers can really benefit from. Being able to understand exactly what our loved one is going through is so helpful, and it's helpful for us to know how to react and how to help, and especially to know not what to do. So thanks, yeah, Jennifer. Thanks for having me.